Hello everyone, it's Dr. Jess and Dr. Bobby from Two Gals and a Glass Half Full. Absolutely, we are two physical therapists that are doing our best to keep our sanity and enjoy each day in this crazy life. We strive, most days, to live healthy. See our personal glasses as half full. Some days we do have to round up a little for that one and hope to share that perspective with you all. Who knows? Maybe we can even have some fun exploring the challenges to healthy living and finding some creative solutions. Tune in with us for monthly mini-series that will re be released weekly to follow along the national narrative. So Dr. Jess, what do you have in your cup today? Today, I've got some nice fresh water with a lime in because I was just feeling a little dehydrated after my run yesterday, but the lime's kind of making my water a little tastier. And uh, Dr. Bobby, what's in your glass today? So haven't been feeling great the last two days. So I have some hibiscus ginger kombucha, try to help my stomach recover a little bit. So perfect. Um, tastes pretty good. You either love it or you don't. <laughs> <laughs> so I figured it is officially February and February around the country is known as Heart Health Awareness Month. So what a perfect month to start out our podcast. I'm wearing my red um, and I figured we'd start there. What do you think? I love it. So why, Dr. Bobby, is Heart Health Awareness Month such a great topic to start with? So, well, one, Joss, it is one in three deaths in the U.S. each year are attributed to cardiovascular disease. Cool. This includes heart attack, stroke, clogged arteries, heart failure, peripheral artery disease, just a lot of not good stuff that's preventable. Yikes. That sounds terrible. And to be honest, a little bit boring. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to stay tuned in for this spiel. Well, true, true. But hold up a sec, Dr. Jess. Let's use this knowledge. Maybe we can have a little fun learning and exploring and see how we could make our heart a little healthier. Cool. I'm totally down to learn about preventing some heart related issues. I've heard it's actually not that hard. Yeah, no, it all comes down to regular. I think the big thing is consistent exercise. Um, I know that can be a scary word, um, but it's literally the best return on your time investment um, you can make to decrease premature death and disability. Yeah, that's it's pretty crazy how much we get from regular exercise. So like all of these things that I read about, so you have decreased stress, improved sleep, decreased blood pressure, improved brain health. I mean, I could use that every day cancer prevention, improved bone health, improved weight management, improved balance and coordination, improved quality of life. And the thing is, it can be implemented for free. So that's like, I, I'm all about free. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I love free. One of my favorite things is the endorphins exercise gets you that happiness. So let's go Absolutely. ahead. Absolutely. Right. Let's talk about um, exercise and why it's beneficial. So it comes down to kind of three things. You have overload, progression, and specificity. Let's start with overload. And what is overload? Overload is just the physical stress that is placed on our body during exercise or physical activity. And that is that stress is in a greater amount than what our body's normally used to. Cool, so like if I were to overload my body by doing something where I breathe harder, so that's gonna make my lungs work a little harder? Is that what you're saying by overload? Yeah, so exactly. Okay. So when you make your like muscles and lungs and just kind of all the tissues in your body work harder. Um, so for example, your lungs is a great one. Um, it re it's required to move more air and to pump more oxygen to your body and your heart to pump faster and harder. Um, and this is all delivered to the muscles. So mm -hmm. this increase in demand increases the efficiency, how well our system is able to deliver that oxygen. And then ultimately the capacity of our lungs, heart and um, circle, it's called your circulatory system. Okay, so cause it like circulates throughout your body. Makes sense, circulatory. Yeah, right. pretty direct, I right. like it. So, yeah. Um, and then after overload, you have progression and progression is really closely tied to uh, overload. Um, once a person, once we reach this, we overload our body and we reach a certain fitness level, we need to then be able to progress to higher levels and be able to do more of a demand because our body has ad adapted to what we recently have been doing. Oh, so that means 
like if I start walking and I feel like I'm not walking fast enough that like, I'll be able to walk faster in order to put that overload onto my body. Right. And then you may eventually be able to jog. So like when you're first starting out, jogging may feel like, oh my goodness, I can never do that. But if you just start walking and start going, eventually that walking gets easier and it's going to take a longer and a faster pace to get your heart rate up. Uh, So then I actually, I'm supposed to get better at this as I go. Yes. Yes. Okay. You just might. So the (laughs) last one after progression is specificity. And what this means is the benefits of physical activity or exercise or whatever you want to call it are very specific to the body systems that are doing the work. So an example of this is um, the benefits of walking are largely related to the lower body and the heart. Whereas push-ups are more for your chest and the muscles of your chest, shoulders, and arms. So you mean if I run a lot, that means I'm not going to be able to lift heavy weight over my head all that well. Correct. Like ultimately your Mm, arms are still getting benefit from running and stuff like that. But if you want to be able to lift heavier weights, you kind of need to actually lift some weights. Lift heavier weights. That's my problem. (laughs) (laughs) So So more or less, what we're saying is that when you're asking the body to do work, it accommodates to the stress that we put on it by getting stronger, but specifically stronger. Exactly. Huh. That's pretty cool. I'll take it. So the next thing that we need to talk about is how much exercise, because unfortunately, if we do one time a day for five minutes, this isn't going to get us exactly what we're wanting if we really want the benefits of our, for our heart. So they recommend, I know this number is going to sound crazy, but they recommend 150 minutes a week. And that is kind of like your ideal baseline number. Uh, Woof. That sounds like it's out of reach. That's many minutes. Yes. But hold up, if you're looking at 150 as together as one, that is a lot. But if you break it down, you can do 30 minutes, five days a week. And that counts and adds up to 150 minutes a week. Oh, true, true. So I don't need to necessarily do it all at once. And if it's like cold and raining one day, I don't have to go outside and get all my minutes that day. Correct. And you don't even have to go outside. You can bring it inside and do yoga do it doesn't need to be running it just needs to get your heart elevated Hmm. all right so you've got a good point keeping it flexible seems like the great first strategy to implement exactly you can easily mix and match different activities to help keep it fun um walk one day yoga outside hiking depending on where you live i know up here i live in chicago um i do not like the cold so you will not see me outside running with snow right now but i have a treadmill i can go inside um i do yoga there's and i have a personal trainer there's so many ways to get that exercise in when the weather is not cooperating Gotcha. And we're specifically talking about that weather because it's February. And so <laughs> just because like I'm in Florida, North Florida. And so it actually is cold and rainy here <laughs> this month. It's kind of hard to get outside. Although I am jealous okay. of all your pictures when you do get outside. <laughs> it is. Very I do tough. get outside a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Way more than I do right now. My outside is run as fast as you can to the car. <laughs> yeah mine's not that bad I can't I can't actually complain (laughs) although I try sometimes Um, but also I'm thinking like outside of just the cardio I think adding some strengthening is also important for that balance because I'm I'm hearing flexibility and balance so and and some of the things you mentioned with like that we're inside that also adds strength so yoga is great because it's going to add some strength component pilates what they call, this is like a big, a big thing right now in a lot of the gyms, which is like the hit classes, high intensity interval training. You can do that kind of stuff at home. There's apps where you can download them. Um, any sort of like body weight support stuff. So like playing, so you're doing burpees. Um, there's nothing special that you need. And it could be like miserable outside. And all you really need is like a hallway in your house. And I mean, that's what I do. <laughs> Well, in in all honesty, like mixing up like that is even better for your body. And they're kind of showing that like things that get your heart rate up and down and up and down, like strength training, like full body workouts, like the HIIT training you're talking about are actually really, really good for our heart. Almost better than a straight, long run. 
Absolutely. Yeah. That research is coming out. is great. Yeah. So, um, another thing I wanted to talk about is like, Dr. Jess, how do you tell if something is a moderate intensity or high intensity? Does it matter? Like, how do I determine that? True. Cause there's like days where like, I'm only doing moderate, like it's just not happening with high intensity. <laughs> like I get that. So like how we consider that moderate, like I don't wear a heart rate monitor or do anything um, specific like that to track that. Um, I just follow the talk test. And so more or less moderate activity means that I can sustain a conversation while I'm doing the activity, but I can't sing. And uh, <laughs> if anybody knows me well, I love singing. I have a terrible <laughs> voice and I never know the words. I usually make them up as I go, but I think they sound better anyways. I just stick with it. So that means when I'm treating all my patients and they all laugh at me because I will just start singing and I'm not even aware of it. And they'll tell me that means I'm probably not doing moderate activity. Absolutely not. Patients. Yeah. You're still underneath moderate, but that's okay. That's okay. I think they appreciate the singing. <laughs> I do. So yeah. Um, and that gets into vigorous, right? So vigorous intense activity, that's where it is actually, you can't sustain a whole conversation but you can get a couple of words out at a time. So you're thinking like, if I'm running, I'll be like, hey, Dr. Bobby, how's your day today? And I have to keep taking that breath. So I'm still talking and breathing, like it's fine. I'm not like not able to talk, but it's only a couple of words at a time. So that's gonna be that like higher level activity. And so there's days where like, you know, you feel well enough to push that hard. Um, but as long as it's moderate to vigorous, um, that's really where we wanna be for that 150 minutes a week. Yeah. So, uh, Dr. Jess, what strategy, strategies, oh, if I could speak, that'd be great, um, have you implemented to kind of help address these struggles? Um, so, right, so we all have struggles, right? We all have different things that get in our way for being able to implement exercise into our daily lives. Um, so a lot of my struggles have a lot to do with working full time, having two kids, and trying to also be a spouse and present to my husband. Um, so time is a huge barrier for me um, and the way I, <laughs> the way I try and um, make it all work is that I do choose to run right now. So I'm not, I'm not biking like I used to because I can throw the kids in the stroller. I can give them a snack while we run and then I can talk to them about how their school day was and I can have that presence with my kids while I'm running. Um, that's where more when I'm doing that moderate level exercise because I want to sustain that conversation, um, especially with my oldest son and, um, and be able to hear him. He's four and a half. Aww. And so um, we have super great conversations about like how the day went, how, you know, what did we learn? You know, how did we play with the other kids? Who was nice? Who do we struggle having conversations with? Um, you know, all these like yeah. um, interpersonal skills, but I can get my 30 minutes of exercise in while I'm being present with my family. And so now I don't feel like I have that guilt of, um, not being able to take care of myself and be present for my kids, especially um, in that like so important time of like between getting home and then going to bed. So uh, Dr. Bobby, what are some of your common struggles? So for me, you know, I don't have kids, it's just me. I do have two dogs. So um, there is the getting home to let them out. And even though they're dogs, they're still mine. And I know they've waited all day for me. So there's kind of the guilt with that because they're not in the house where they can go running and they can go outside and it's winter and I'm not going outside. So, um, I think my, one of my biggest things is just time right now. I find time and then the accountability, you know, I don't have, is just me. So if I don't feel like doing it, I don't have anyone to be like, come on, you should, you know, let's go, we can do it together. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have that. Um, and like for you, I'm sure like you, you're instilling these awesome things into your boys and teaching them, you know, how it helps yeah. with them, you know, too. And so helps I with like the accountability because you're like, oh, I'm accountable to them, even though like I don't feel like it. Um, and then, then that's why like actually Dr. Bobby and I, we have a bit of an accountability for each other sometimes. Is that like, we'll text each other about, hey, like, how are you doing today? Did you get out? And then if you know that text is coming, like you want <laughs> to be able to answer it. Like, yeah, it's like, it. like, oh, I don't want to answer. Or you like, <laughs> but it's still just a text. So it's in all honesty, text. yes, I had a great run today as I sit on the couch. Like, right. you know, like if I feel too guilty about it, you know, so right. 
we and don't, granted, we don't need the guilt. Like we can be like, we can totally be honest and be like, yeah, today just right. didn't happen. You but know, yeah, like for the most part, that's what I do. And, um, but still it's like, that's what's the hardest. I think that's the hardest thing is like time, you know, working long hours, have a lot of like really fun goals and things coming up. And, um, it, if it's not done in the morning, so if it's not done in the morning, I normally am going to miss it. Right. And that's, and I'm on the opposite side because my mornings are just crazy. I'm just surviving, trying to get out of the house. So mine's definitely in the evenings. So, and that's where like daylight and weather can be like such a barrier. Um, but, you know, just making sure that you kind of find what's, what's going to work for you the best. And then do your best to just kind of work that in, into your regular schedule. Um, and the other thing you want to think about is like, it's it, the guilt that you have for like not taking care of yourself is like terrible like you've got to be able to like get past that and say like I'm not feeling guilty for putting work into me because this is how I'm going to make sure that I'm um there for the people in my lives I'm there for for me you know for my patients because I can have the the strength and and the activity to, to move all day long but then I'm there trying to be there for my kids kind of demonstrate to them what a healthy lifestyle is and then be there for my friends too and be like Hey, like, I want to make sure that I'm, I'm helping to be your accountability partner, because I'm hoping that you're going to be my accountability partner. And then, you know, you're just kind of like better taking care of the relationships in your life as you're able to live this healthy lifestyle. So it's not about being selfish. Like that's sometimes society wants to tell us that, like, you know, you're a female, you need to be there for everybody. You need to take care of these people. You know, you need to put yourself last. And it's like kind of opposite. You need to finish up, you know? Right. Yeah. One thing that I thought uh, one thing that's found really helped me is on Sundays, I will sit down and plan out my whole week. I'm like, I have a calendar, a planner. I love colors. I love pens. So everything has its own she color. She loves colors. It's all right? color coded. And stickers. And so I plan out my, I plan out my workouts and I recently, and I know not everyone can do this, but I recently hired a personal trainer um, a few months back and that has been awesome. And it's just every morning and that provides a little bit of accountability accountability to me because I don't want to cancel on him so right and you have like you have your guests get in the game because there's like some financial yes, impact exactly. to it so like the more skin you've got in the game like the better it is sometimes you know for that accountability that helps um like we bought a new running stroller when we had our second kiddo and it was like it's nice and it pushes really well so like kind of like well we spent money on it so I'm definitely going to want to use it. So right. sometimes like spending money is not bad, but it totally, you don't have to, there's so much that you can totally. do for free yeah. as well. So it can be both. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, so go ahead. Well, I was going to say, so like each week we want to leave all of our listeners and followers with a challenge um, and a challenge that you can achieve. Um, so this week, we want you to write down your barriers to leading an active lifestyle. Like, what do you struggle with? Um, because sometimes if we, if we, sometimes we need to write it down to just even see it, to come up with ways that we can come, um, go work around it, make our lives mm -hmm. better. Um, and we'd love it if you would uh, post your challenges on our Instagram or Facebook pages. Um, so we can all support each other and find creative solutions that help. Maybe you're going to, your solution has helped going to help someone else hopefully that's the idea because like if you have the struggle then I probably have the struggle or Dr. Bobby has the struggle and so we can all kind of work together to find common barriers and common solutions exactly and it will help create that positive environment that we all can grow and learn together um, so you can find these links at the bottom of this podcast or just search for two girls in a half glass full so we are two all gals Two gals. gals. Oh yeah. Not girls. Girls. Well, we are gals. girls, but it's gals. So yeah. two gals and a half glass full. Um, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, um, and soon to be elsewhere. Yeah. Awesome. So, and then stay tuned next week because we've got another episode coming, staying in the mood of February of, you know, cardiovascular heart health awareness month. So we're interviewing a mom of two kiddos. She's a nurse and she's aware of what we quote unquote should do but we're going to help for the conversation of what really happens. So stay tuned. Bye everyone. Bye.